Hey guys, what's up? I'm Just from Movie Basic Blogs here with Richard and guys. I got this idea on on a video on who is the top ten or top prime nine players who are not in the lineup all the time that should be and is actually producing some work for their team. But before we get to the countdown, let's bring in Richard. Richard, what's going on, man? Not too much. I don't agree with this list 100%, but nonetheless, a bunch of good players. Yeah. So let's start off in Tampa Bay at number 9, Felipe Lopez. Richard, you're a race expert. Tell us about how well he is producing while Evan Longoria is out. Well, this is a guy uh, that the Rays got in a mile league deal. Uh, he's been around quite a bit, coming over from the Red Sox. Uh, well, he didn't come over from the Red Sox. He was on the Red Sox and he was a free agent. And the uh, Rays picked him up. He's playing 13 games this year. He's in 316 with two more than four ribbies. I think he's a great player. Um, if it were up to me, I'd, uh, I mean, there's not really any place you could put him once Longo gets back. I um, mean, you could say you could put him at second base, put um, Ben Zobrist in right field, put Matt Joyce as the DH and then Johnny Damon in the left field. But then, um, uh, but then you wouldn't have anywhere to put Sam Full and you need him in the lineup. He's just great. But um, I think that Felipe Lopez is definitely a lot better player than Sean Rodriguez. Um, I think that Felipe Lopez will get a lot of time this year due to his pre outbreak. Yeah, I mean, I have the last time I've ever saw this guy was in Arizona. I ever, other since that, I have not seen him play another game of baseball. I I seriously haven't. So Felipe Lopez, two home runs, five RBIs, and he's having a decent batter average so far this season at a point two eight six. I can probably see him being a good. Oh, yeah, five. Yeah, I can actually see him being a pretty decent. I mean, when Evan Longoria is back up, he's probably gonna be able to be sent down to. Uh, their minor league team. So, next on our list at number eight. I mean, I have a lot of conversation with Richard about this one. Ty Wigginton of the Colorado Rockies. Richard, I'm not feeling too hot about Ty Wigginton. How well is he producing for the Rockies, and why is he not in that lineup as an everyday starter? Uh, I think that he's just not in the lineup because Jonathan Herrera is just hot as hell right now. Um, He's not, he's not doing too great on the season when he's played. He's playing 13 games, hitting 200 with no homers and four RBIs. He's a great player. Uh, he used to be an everyday starter. Uh, he is a good, he, like I said, he's a really great player. Um, he's 33 now, so he might be declining a little bit. But I think he fits well at number eight on this list. Yeah, he's batting a 200 batting average. I mean, he's not an everyday starter. Everyday starter. Herrera is just dominating the game at, well, at his position right now. Um, do you see him playing second base this year? I mean, I've, I heard he was supposed to be signed as a second base starter. Was that a good position to put him at? Well, let's see. The second base, uh, the second base competition consisted of Jose Lopez, um, freaking, uh, uh, Eric Young Jr., uh, Ty Wigginton too, and then Jonathan Herrera came into the mix. So you got four guys juggling. I think Herrera, you gotta have Herrera in the lineup while he's hot. When he cools down, put in Wigginton, see what he can do. Uh, if not, put Jose Lopez back in. Yeah. So I really I have to agree with that one right there. So next on our list at number seven, I also have another big question on this one. Um, you guys are going to be like, what are you guys talking about? Who the hell is this guy? Alright, so enough of the jibber-jabber. Let's continue. Next, we have Ryan Roberts of the Arizona Diamondbacks. This kid has been sent down up to minor league, up to major league, minor, major, minor, major, like once a month. I mean, three or four times a month from last season. This guy was always sent up, sent down, sent up, sent down. Richard, this guy... Two home runs today against Cincinnati. Is this his kid? This kid is he going to be something in the future? Well, I don't know how much more, much more time he has in the future. He's thirty years old. Um, he did start. He did play one hundred and ten games for Arizona back in 09. He was pretty good. Seven home runs, twenty five RBIs, a two seventy nine average. Right now he's hitting three fifty five with uh, two homers, seven RBIs. That might be different. I'm looking on Baseball Reference. I don't know if they had those two home runs from today. Um, but, uh, you know, he's a great player, but 
he's a second baseman. That's the problem. You got Kelly Johnson at second base, who is a better player. Let's face it. I think that Ryan Roberts could be an everyday starter for a lower class team like the Pirates or something like that. But uh, I don't think he's gonna be able to beat Kelly Shopik out for that second base starting position. Okay, Kelly Shopik plays plays for the Rays. We're thinking Kelly, Kelly Johnson. Kelly Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Too many yeah. Kellys. Yeah. I have to say, Ryan Roberts, this guy had a great game, a terrific game today. Uh, I really enjoy watching him. I mean, living out here in Arizona, that's all I watch is Diamondbacks right now. Angels I watch, Yankees I watch, but every time the Diamondbacks or the Yankees or the Angels have a day off, let's just turn on the Diamondbacks and see how well Ryan Roberts does. Um, next, we have another controversial pick on in this countdown, Mike Avilas. This guy, so far this season, is doing pretty decent. He only has a home run. 10 RBIs, I mean, 10 RBIs, that's really awesome to start the season. This guy has three stolen bases and is batting a 245. Richard, why hasn't the Royals say, Mike, you're going to be starting? Why Why is he not starting? Uh, you know, I really have no idea. I, I think this guy is 100 times better than Chris Getz. I mean, no offense to Chris Getz, he's, he's a nice player, but he's not a starter. Um, Michael Vila's last year, I think... Off the top of my head, I think 314. Uh, he was a really great, great, great player for this Royals team. Um, and he's not hitting 245. He must look at his on base percentage. He's hitting 200. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know why. I don't know why he's not starting. Yeah, I mean, this team has Keila Kahui. That guy is breaking out. I really, really want to see Mike just be in that rotation at least most of the season. I mean, he's he's just a guy you really want to put in. I mean, he's pretty decent, so why not put Mike Vilas in? Next at number five, we have the top five now. I also have this was a big controversial list. I mean, we were still trying to get this video done, and we just, we decided to put Brendan Bosch in at number five. Really, not I mean, just like he has the same stats as Vilas. Home run, a 10 RBI season. He's batting 302. Hasn't been starting a whole lot lately. Richard, tell us the, the reason why. Uh, well, he has been starting quite a bit. He's playing 16 games. Um, he he is a he's a great player. I think he's gonna get a lot more playing time now with the Victor Martinez injury, because that'll mean that a bunch of guys get switched around and Mabley Ordonez is coming back and all that. So he'll get some more playing time due to all those uh, chain of events. I think Brennan Bosch is a great player. I think he's a much better outfielder than Ryan Rayburn. I like Rayburn a lot, but I'd rather have uh, Bosch in the outfield. Like you said, a 302 average. That's a hot start to the season. Last year, um, you know, double-digit home runs. He's a great player. Um, he's a nice compliment piece in most teams, but he's a great player in Detroit. Um, I... I think that he's going to get more playing time. Yeah, I really hope he actually does get some more playing time. Uh, I heard he's so far. I'm not a t I am not don't follow the Tigers at all. So, I don't know what the whole deal is. Why is he not starting? If you guys are a Tigers fan, please let us know why he's not starting a whole lot. So, next on our list, we have Niger Morgan. This guy... Troubled in Pittsburgh, troubled in Washington. When is this guy ever going to find a team that will accept him? Milwaukee decided to give a shot at him, and that's what they did. And ever since that, he's actually been pretty decent. He's He has no home runs because he's not considered a home run hitter. Two RBIs, but this guy has a hot batting average at a .455. Wow, Richard, is this guy finally find a home in Milwaukee? You know, I think he's a great player. I don't know if he should be this high up on the list. He's obviously out to a fantastic start. I'd like to see out of a guy like Nigel Morgan because he is a head case. Like you said, no homers and not a power hitter whatsoever. Um, I think he has a lot more upside than Carlos Gomez. I think he'd have Nigel Morgan starting center field, especially since he's this hot. Yeah, I, I've never seen him like start this hot off before, so... I'm really excited on what he's been contributing to this team. Everybody thought this guy was going to be like, oh, more trouble coming this way. So i actually going to prove him on. If he can actually stay like anger-free for this season, I'm actually going to see him being a really great, great outfielder. 
Next on our list, we have finally down to the top three athletes on our list. I'm really excited to announce the next one. One of my favorite player, well, one of my one of my Yankee players, Eric Chavez. This guy is filling in for Alex Rodriguez, and last night he actually was one of the guys who scored the one of the runs to actually tie the game. Uh, I forgot who it was. It was against Texas. Really great game. And wow, I was really impressed on he's going to be a really great consistent backup slash DH. Richard, how well are you surprised with him? He's batting three, he has three RBIs this season, and he's batting a 389. Tell us about Eric Chavez. Um, yeah, well, he actually drove in the game when he won last night. And Eric Chavez, like you said, off to a great start. I mean, you know, this is a good sign. A guy like Chavez, you know, all the injury seasons, he hasn't played more than uh, 90 games since 2007, which is tough, um, especially with a guy you look back in the early 2000s, mid-2000s, a guy like Chavez with so much potential. Um, I mean, he was he was just phenomenal. Uh, you know, he, uh, he was a really high home run hitter in the high 20s to low 30s, mid-30s. Uh, you know, when Air, as soon as A-Rod comes back, he's not going to be starting. I think that you could probably plug him in at DH when Jorge Posada is the catching, which may not be a lot, but he'll get playing time nonetheless. You don't want to keep him off on the bench for too long, though, because when you have a guy like this was a really hot bat, you need to get him some playing time. Yeah, I really agree with that. So uh, we got to hurry this uh, video up a little bit due to the time for YouTube saying that we can only have less than 15 minutes. Um, next at number two, we got Tyler Cole of the Chicago Cubs. I don't know why this guy's not starting. Kosuke Fukudome should actually be a backup. Tyler Colvin, really tremendous athlete. Richard, tell us about Tyler. Well, Tyler's a great player. Uh, 20 home runs, 56 RBIs last season with a, with a 254 average. Like you said, a lot better than Fukudome. He missed um, a lot of the, uh, he missed not a lot of last season, but he missed a couple of weeks at the end of the season to a broken bat actually piercing him in the chest, which that was a really weird thing that happened. I think the reason why Fukuoka is starting is because he makes twelve and a half million dollars. You know, that's basically it. But I like Coleman a lot. He's a lot better than Fukuoka. Yeah. Uh, next and finally, final, finally ending this countdown. You guys are saying if this guy's on your list, you're gonna be uh, you guys would be really astonished why he's not. But he has made our list. If you know if we're thinking of Jed Lauer, the Boston Red Sox. I've never heard of this guy until I think he played for uh, Toronto. Um, Richard, tell me on how, what's the key to this guy's success so far. He's been a, he's been in Boston his whole career. Uh, I think you're thinking of the Nick Green or something like that. Uh, former Red Sox, but Jed Lowry is just an absolute animal right now. Um, you know, I'm from New Hampshire, so that's all I get to really, that's really all that's on a lot is the Red Sox, and my whole family is Red Sox fans, so I've been just watching this guy, and just, he's only playing 11 games, he's a, I, right now, he's a lot better than uh, Marco Scudero, um, He's batting 5.16, yes, people, 5.16, with a 1.32 OPS. Two home runs, nine RBIs, a 4 for 4 game last night, and, um, well, yesterday afternoon, morning, actually, in the morning game, the Patriots Day game. Um, he's great. Uh, I think you're going to keep him starting until Marco Scudero, not until Marco Scudero, until Jed Lowry cools down a lot. Yeah. I don't know where I was getting him coming out of Toronto. I mean, I probably mistaken him for another player. Um, but I really, really, really am impressed with Jed Lowry's success so far being a Yankee fan. That's not what I hear because that just means he's going to be a threat for the Yankee squad. So there you go, guys. There you go, guys. We have our prime nine player players who have not been who are not in the lineup as often as they should be, but they're still bringing success to their team. Guys, we'll talk to you later. Make sure to check out our videos. We almost have our 100th video coming up soon. We're only here three months, 100 videos already. I am really excited to do that. Make sure to follow us on our Twitters, on our websites. We'll talk to you guys later.